Welcome everybody, I'm Laura Shu. In this video, I'm going to talk about smart previews, which are new in Lightroom 5. Now, smart previews are designed to allow you to develop your photos even when the originals or the masters are offline. If they're on an external hard drive that's unplugged, you can still develop your photos. You can also export copies of your photos through the export dialog, through export to email, or through published services up to 2540 pixels on their longest edge. Now I want to jump to PowerPoint for a sec to remind you of this slide that I covered in the video on organizing and backing up your photos. In the scenario where smart previews are useful, on your internal hard drive, maybe on your laptop for example, you've got your Lightroom catalog. And then on an external hard drive, you have all or some of your master photos. If on this internal hard drive, you have Lightroom Build Smart Previews, which are stored in the Lightroom catalog, then when you go on the road with your laptop, you can edit your photos, leaving this external hard drive behind. When you get back and plug in the external hard drive, the editing work just seamlessly transfers to the master photos without you even thinking about it. Now there's one more scenario where Smart Previews could be useful regardless of whether your photos are on an external hard drive or an internal hard drive, and regardless of whether you need to travel with your photos. If you've built smart previews, and even if your originals are still online, as you select those photos in the develop module, the time to load those photos can be reduced if you have smart previews built. Now, I don't believe you're going to see any additional benefits if you're already converting to DNG and you've chosen the Embed Fast Load Data option in your DNG preferences, and watch my DNG video for that. But if you're still working with camera proprietary RAW files, and if you're really sensitive to that delay or that lag, then you could try building smart previews to see if that improves the lag. Now, the reason why it could is that the smart previews are smaller than your original RAW files, and Lightroom will load the smart preview first and then go to your original. You won't notice it going from one to the other. You'll just be able to start working more quickly. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to Lightroom so I can show you how this works. Now, right now, I have most of my photos on my internal hard drive, but I also have some photos on my external hard drive here. The external hard drive is plugged in right now, and I know that because this indicator is green and I don't have question marks on the folders here. I'm going to go ahead and eject this hard drive, and we'll see that I immediately get question marks on the folders. So Lightroom can't see these folders anymore, and not surprisingly, it also can't see the individual photos. So I have exclamation points on these photos. Now let me point out that I have not yet built smart previews for these photos from Oaxaca. So Lightroom is telling me with the exclamation point that the photos are missing. And you've seen this from my video on file and folder management. Now, even with the photos missing and no smart previews, I can still, here in the library module, first of all, see the photos, and I can go to loop view and see them larger. I can also rate them and flag them and keyword them and make collections with them all without having access to the originals. So what we're seeing here are the JPEG previews that Lightroom stores behind the scenes in the catalog, and that allows us to do some work with the photos, and I talk more about that in my Introduction to Lightroom video. The limit to that, however, is when I want to go develop the photos. So if I select this photo and I go to the Develop module, I see that the folder could not be found and all of the develop controls are grayed out. So with the regular previews Lightroom has stored, and as always stored, we can't do the develop work. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug this external hard drive back in, because we're going to build smart previews for these photos. We have to have access to the originals in order to actually do that. So Lightroom can see these photos now. I'm going to go ahead and do a controller command A to select all of the photos in this folder, and there are a couple ways I can get to the instruction to Lightroom to build smart previews. I can go up to Library, Previews, Build Smart Previews, or I can come over to the histogram area here, and I have some indicators down here. This first indicator tells me that I have 13 photos here where the originals are online, 
but that do not have Smart Previews. If I click on this indicator, I get a button to build Smart Previews for this selection of photos. So the status bar shows me that it's building Smart Previews. Now Smart Previews are lossy DNG files. DNG is Adobe's RAW file format, so these are small RAW files. I talk a lot about DNGs in my two videos in this series on DNGs. You can build these Smart Previews for your RAW originals and also for your JPEG and PSD and TIFF originals. You don't gain the additional benefits of RAW files, but you'll be able to work with them offline. So Smart Previews have been built. I'll go ahead and say OK. And notice that for this folder and this selection, I have zero photos where I have the originals but no Smart Previews. And then over here, I've got 13 that have originals and Smart Previews. If I click on this indicator, it would allow me to then discard the Smart Previews that it found. I don't want to do that though. I want to show you how they can be useful. So I've built Smart Previews for this folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and eject this hard drive again. Question marks on the folders. But notice that I no longer have exclamation points on the photos. Now I have these white squares, which indicate that even though the original is not online, I do have Smart Previews for these photos. So now if I select one of these photos and I go to the Develop module, I have access to all the controls and I can develop this photo. Now let me go ahead and do some work here on this photo. In fact, destroy the photo here, just so that it's obvious that I did develop work. Notice that Lightroom is telling me here that I'm working with the Smart Preview. So I'm only working with the Smart Preview here. The hard drive is unplugged. When I plug it back in, and I'll do that right now, we'll see that Lightroom immediately will reflect, as soon as it comes online here, that I'm working with the original. And if I make this larger, my develop work is just seamlessly applied. Now I must go back and undo this work because it's really bothering me here. <laughs> Now I can build Smart Previews for all of my photos, or I could build Smart Previews for just individual folders or even individual photos. You would want to build Smart Previews for everything on your external hard drive that you want to be able to edit while you're offline. When you get back online, back from traveling for example, you could decide whether you want to just go ahead and let those Smart Previews live forever or you could delete them again. If I wanted to delete all of the Smart Previews on my internal drive here, I'll select the highest level folder, go to Grid View, select All with Ctrl or Command A, and then I could come over to this second indicator, click on it, and discard all of the Smart Previews. Now let me just point out that if you do make a selection of more than a thousand photos, so that I have 1300 here, I'm going to do a controller command A to select all. At that point, your counts here are not going to be accurate. For performance reasons, Lightroom is only going to show you counts on the first 1000 photos. So the pluses here mean that there really are more than these counts are showing. If I click on one of these indicators to perform some action, for example on this one to discard Smart Previews, I really would be discarding all of them, and not just this 967 that this shows. In this case I would be discarding 1277. So don't let those counts throw you when you see a plus there. You've seen how to build Smart Previews here in the library module. If you decide you're going to work with Smart Previews and want to build them when you import new shoots of photos, then in the import dialog, when you're copying from a memory card, you'll see a Build Smart Previews checkbox here. So you can just automatically build them as you bring your photos into Lightroom. Now Smart Previews would live in your Lightroom catalog on your internal hard drive. Now I know that many of you who have laptops have a limited amount of space on your laptops, and you know that all of your master photos wouldn't fit on your laptop, how are Smart Previews going to fit there? And also, if Smart Previews were up in the cloud, I'm sure Adobe would only give us limited space, how would they fit? Well, Smart Previews are much smaller than your master files. Number one, they're no larger than 2,540 pixels on their longest edge. So let me go ahead and look at the information for this particular photo. So this photo on its longest edge has 3,500 pixels, 
this would be cut down to 2540. That will make the file smaller. In addition, these DNG files are compressed. They're lossy. They have JPEG compression applied to them. So technically, they are of lower quality. But as a result, you save a tremendous amount of hard drive space. Now, I've done an exercise where I built smart previews for this catalog of 1300 photos. The master photos take up 27 gigabytes. The smart previews take up 1.5 gigabytes. So approximately 5% of what the master photos take up. So smart previews can live on your laptop or could live up in the cloud and take up much less space. Now let me show you where smart previews are stored. I'm going to go up to Edit on the PC or Lightroom on the Mac and then down to Catalog Settings. I always go here when I want to get to my catalog. I'm going to go to the General tab and Lightroom shows me where my catalog is, but I can click on the Show button and that will bring up a Windows Explorer or Mac Finder window with my catalog folder selected. Now in here, I've got the regular previews that Lightroom has always had, but here are the smart previews that Lightroom has built. So it's just another previews file. I never go into it, but that's where it lives. So what are the limitations of smart previews? Because they're smaller in pixels, you don't have the full detail in the file. And because they're compressed, they will have some loss of quality. But really, you'd have to zoom in on both the smart preview and the original side by side maybe zoom in to 2 to 1 or 3 to 1, and then look very carefully to see the differences. Nevertheless, because there are differences, what I would recommend is that if you want to develop your photos offline, that you can do most of the develop work, but that you should do the really detailed work. For example, the noise reduction and the sharpening and really detailed spot removal work when you get home and have access to the originals. So for people that travel, this is a great new feature in Lightroom 5. And I'm sure we'll see more uses for smart previews in the future. This concludes the video on smart previews.